molecular compounds are the compounds that basically consist of two or more non-metals and that would give them a stable configuration. They always consist of bonds that are called as covalent bonds and they only consist of uh, the elements that are non-metals. For example, we can think of CO2. Carbon is a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal, so this compound is a molecular compound. Um, N2O5, nitrogen is a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal, uh, PCL3 is a molecular compound because phosphorus is a non-metal, chlorine is a, a non-metal. So how do we write the name and formula for molecular compound? Basically, the rule is that when we are naming a molecular compound, the first non-metal in the formula is named by the element name. So whatever is the name of the first non-metal that we see, we basically just use the name of it element. And the second non-metal is named by using the first syllable of the name followed by I, D, E. Okay. And whenever there is a subscript present in the formula, that basically tells us what is the number of atoms present in the element. And to show how many number of atoms are present, we basically use a prefix in front of its name. Prefix means, let's say if there is one atom present, we use the name mono. If it's two atoms, di. Three atoms, tri. Four atoms, tetra. Five atoms, penta. 6 atoms hexa, 7 atoms hepta, 8 atoms octa, 9 atoms nona, and 10 atoms deca. For instance, we can take an example um, of one of the compounds. Uh, let's say if I'm working with NO. Okay, so this is a molecular compound. How do I know that? First thing I need to identify that N is a non metal, oxygen is also a non metal, which means this is a molecular compound. And how do we name the molecular compound? We are going to follow these two rules that are given to us. The first non-metal that is written in the formula is nitrogen. So we basically just use the name of the element. So it will be written as nitrogen followed by the name of the second non-metal with ending with IDE. So this will be oxide. Now the subscripts that we see here we have to also tell what are those subscript. So what is the, if there is no subscript written, that essentially means this is 1. So you can assume NO means N1 and O1. Usually whenever the number of atom is 1, we usually skip the writing the number 1. But that essentially means it's 1 atom of nitrogen, 1 atom of oxygen. So for 1, we use a prefix mono. So if we were to put here a prefix that would be mono so you would think it would be mono nitrogen monoxide right but ideally whenever we are writing the name you would never see the name to begin with mono so whenever even though it is mono if there's one atom in the first element you would never use the prefix mono in the very beginning so even if it is one atom you can basically just get rid of mono but if it is two three four any other numbers you would still keep the prefix on only prefix that we never use in the beginning of the name of the first element is mono so final name of this compound is going to be nitrogen monoxide and here since it's like two o's you basically can get rid of one of these and use monoxide Let's try naming a couple other compounds. Let's say if you're working with this, what would be the name of this compound? First thing you should identify if it's molecular or ionic. So carbon is a non-metal, oxygen is a non-metal, meaning both are non-metal. So this is a molecular compound. And these are the rules that we use to name molecular compounds. So what is the name of the first element? First non-metal is carbon. So the name would be carbon. How many of these? Just one, so mono. We will be skipping the mono in the beginning. The next second element is oxygen. So the name would be oxide. Bad. Oops. So name would be here oxide because the name second and non-metal ends with IDE. And how many of those do we have? Oh, 
never mind this is going to be carbon dioxide okay now if we were to name this compound which is co we'll name the first element which is carbon followed by the second element which is oxide and how many of carbons carbon is one but we never put mono in the beginning so that is going to stay as it is how about this oxygen this oxygen would be oxide and we have one of those so it would be monoxide so carbon can be carbon dioxide carbon monoxide right okay moving on let's okay so this table gives you examples for a bunch of different molecular compounds that you can practice naming so what i would suggest is you basically look at the formula and come up with their names on your own without looking at the answers here and do the reverse as well so look at the uh, name of the compound and then try to come up with for the uh, chemical formula for that compound let's try a couple questions for instance if i'm uh, looking what would be the chemical formula for this compound it is called carbon disulfide so when you look at the name from here you can basically tell that this is a uh, example of molecular compound why because we only use these prefixes in case of uh, molecular compound secondly you can also see that the carbon and sulfide both are non-metal in nature meaning these are molecular compounds now to write the name you basically write the first element which is carbon so that comes first then it is disulfide meaning we have two sulfide stands for sulfur which means we have two of those so whatever is the prefix that would become your subscript in the molecular formula so the molecular formula here would be cs2 carbon dioxide we first write the name of the first non-metal which is carbon and how many of these we have no number is given meaning it's one dioxide means there are two oxygen atoms so o2 whatever is your prefix will become your subscript in the molecular formula and when you're doing the reverse so if you're going from formula to name whatever is your subscript that becomes your prefix for the name so you see right here nitrogen and o we just wrote this uh, name in the previous slide we wrote it as nitrogen monoxide so my advice is that you stick with using the prefix mono sometimes you'll see that mono is not used that much which is all right sometimes people skip those but in my suggestion you should stick to the rule and just put monoxide both of those would be acceptable okay let's try writing the name for this particular compound this is n2o so we'll write the name of the first non-metal which is nitrogen how many of those do we have two nitrogen so it would be di nitrogen and then is the oxygen element oxygen will turn into oxide how many of those do we have nothing's written meaning i only have one so it would be dinitrogen monoxide so basically you can see right here the table tells you it's dinitrogen oxide which is also all right but i would suggest you stick to the rule if it's mono you just use the mono and remember we'd never use mono in front of the name uh, starting we never none of the names you will see will start with mono okay you can try this question what is this this is if you just look at the formula it is sulfur how many one so there's no prefix and then we have fluorine and here we have six of fluorines so it would turn the prefix would be hexa because it is six and fluorine will turn into fluoride so the name would be sulfur hexa fluoride now if we were doing the reverse if the name was given and we were to go to the formula sulfur would be s fluoride would be f how many of fluoride six so formula would be sf6 so writing the naming and writing the formula of molecular compounds is a lot easier okay. another study check question is write the molecular formula for diphosphorus pentoxide so first when you see this formula you know this is a molecular compound why because you're seeing these prefixes written and you never see prefixes written in ionic compounds so what would be the formula here we'll start with phosphorus phosphorus is p how many die meaning we have two of those so whatever is your prefix will turn into your subscript next we have oxide oxide basically stands for oxygen how many of oxides we have pent 
pent means it's 5 so that would turn into your prefix so molecular formula here would be P2O5 so this is all about naming molecular compounds this is the easiest uh, uh, type of questions that you can get from molecular compounds naming of molecular compounds Okay, the next thing we'll see is how you can actually identify if a compound is ionic or it is uh, a covalent compound. So we have already seen ionic basically means it will consist of a metal and a non-metal or it will consist of a polyatomic ion which is like ammonia. Okay, so whenever you see ionic compounds, they will always consist of a metal and a non-metal or instead of a metal, it will consist of polyatomic ion which is ammonium ion no, no other uh, ions then we have covalent compound covalent compound basically means molecular compound where only elements that would be present would be non-metals so you can identify if an element if a compound is ionic or covalent based on this if the first element is metal or ammonium it's ionic if the first element is non-metal it is covalent so here are some questions. Uh, the question is essentially identify each compound as ionic or covalent and give its correct name. So let's start with the first one which is SO3. How can we identify which compound this is? You look at the first uh, element. In this case the first element is sulfur which we know is a non-metal which means this is an example of a covalent compound you can also identify that this is also non-metal the second one is also a non-metal so this is a covalent compound or a molecular compound the bond a here is covalent bond now the next thing is uh, name of this compound so we start with naming the first non-metal which is sulfur how many of those one so if it is one we do not use the prefix mono in the very beginning so we'll start with sulfur followed by the name of the second non-metal which is oxygen oxygen will turn into oxide so it would be oxide how many of those three so the prefix would be trioxide okay the next compound that we see is BaCl2 which type of compound it is Ba is an example of a metal how do I know that? If you look up BA in your periodic table, you will see that BA is present in the second group in your periodic table. This is barium. If it's present in the left side of the periodic table, it is a metal. Whenever it's a metal, the compound is ionic. This is a metal followed by a non-metal. How do we name ionic compounds? You simply write name of the metal, which is barium, followed by name of the anion which is chloride so instead of chlorine again you use the first syllable followed by ide if this was a type 2 metal we would be using roman numerals in between but since this barium is a type 1 metal we can predict its charge we will not be using any roman numerals in between so the name is going to be simply barium chloride how about this what you see right here is nh4 what is NH4? NH4 is ammonium ion. So whenever you see NH4, that essentially means this is an ion. So the compound has to be ionic. Okay. If you have memorized the polyatomic ions, you would be able to recognize that PO3 is phosphite ion and NH4 is ammonium ion. Here again, we do not care about this uh, number that we see or the subscript that we see because this is ionic. How do you name ionic compounds with polyatomic ions? You basically write the name of the first cation, which is ammonium. So it would be ammonium, followed by name of the second anion, which is phosphate in this case. So the, oh, sorry, phosphite, PO3 is phosphite. So name would be ammonium, phosphite. Okay, moving on, we see this compound, which is Cu2, Cu3. What is Cu? Cu is an example of a metal, for sure. Cu stands for copper. Copper is a metal. So this compound is also ionic in nature. What is the name of this? Again, you start with the name of the metal, followed by name of the second 
uh, ion which in this case is an ion this is called co3 co3 2 minus is always carbonate ion but first thing we have to see if i'm writing the name copper copper is a type 2 metal which means i need to give its charge in parentheses so we have to figure out what is the charge on this copper how would we figure that out let's do this right here so copper 2 plus mean cu sorry cu co3 cu2 co3 so we first need to identify that this is copper if we have two of those that means let's assume we the charge of each copper is x and we have two of those so the total charge would be 2x what is the charge of this anion remember this everything goes together this is co3 2 minus so carbonate ion usually carries a charge of negative 2 how many of those do we have we only have one so that would be a total charge of negative 2 will be equal to 0 because the total charge on the compound is 0 so if you don't understand this then basically that means you go, need to go back and review the video which is on ionic compound so that would be the video right before this video number one for naming ionic compounds anyways moving forward if i'm trying to solve for x here this would give me 2x plus minus means a negative 2 will be equal to 0 so in order to get rid of this minus 2 I will add 2 right here add 2 on the other side of the equal as well this and this will get cancelled to give me 0 what I'm left with is 2x is equal to 2 now to get rid of this 2 I need to divide both the sides by 2 that would give me x as negative 1 so in this case that means the charge on each of these copper is negative one so we will put one right here copper would carry oh did i put negative sorry i meant positive copper would carry a charge of positive one metals never carry a negative charge okay uh, my bad this would be positive two divided by two would give you a positive one what would be the name of the other ion here we just said this is carbonate so it would be followed by carbonate ion so the name would be copper one carbonate do not forget to put this in the roman numerals otherwise your answer would be incomplete and not correct okay next we see this molecule n2o4 the first element that we see here is nitrogen which is a non-metal meaning this compound is covalent how do we name it if it's a covalent compound it's a molecular compound we start with naming the first non-metal which is nitrogen how many two Two means di nitrogen followed by the next non-metal which is oxygen so oxygen would be oxide how many four four means the prefix is tetra for four so tetra oxide so the name would be di nitrogen tetra oxide Another thing is whenever you see alphabet written like this, A and O coming together. So if two vowels are coming together, you basically get rid of the A and it would turn into tetroxide. So this would be dinitrogen tetroxide. So if you ever see two vowels coming together, A and O, you basically get rid of the A and you continue with the O. All right. So I think this is the end of this particular um, video. This gives you information of how to name molecular compounds and how to write the chemical formula for molecular compounds.